Hi everybody, you might be wondering what the rapid turn is doing sat on the shears of my manual lathe. I thought if you look here, you'll see I've been doing a spot of machining. Um, I needed to make a register face on here because what I'm going to do is put a lever collet closer on here. I just recently had a job where I had to do 1500 uh, little buttons in stainless steel and try tightening the collet chuck up 1500 times with a little 2 inch tommy bar or a little 2 inch bar that is provided becomes a bit painful after a while and it's time consuming so I realised that the Slant Pro lathe has the facility to use a collet closer and I investigated it and had a look uh, in the catalogues and I realised that the outside diameter to take a 5C of the draw tube would still fit in here so okay uh, my reasoning would be or my uh, thinking would be okay it's going to be either too long or too short but I can either lengthen it or whatever however uh, what I think I will do is rather than lengthen it or shorten it rather because it is too long for to fit the rabbit turn is make an adapter to go a spacer to go here to take up the difference in lengths I probably also strengthen the back plate here that holds the motor because in order to operate the lever you've got to have a, a, a pivot point attached to the plate here for the mechanism to lever against and there's quite a lot of force on that so it'll need a bit of strengthening uh, maybe increase the length of these so I can double the thickness of the plate or leave them the same thickness but make a new plate with double the thickness on the back uh, just to give it a little bit of strength but I'll see, see how it looks and we'll keep taking film of progress Okay, one of the first things I noticed that is different between the draw tube uh, that's fitted to the rabbit turn as against the the lever action collet closer for the Slam Pro is that the OD on the tube itself is very slightly larger and it won't actually enter the spindle on the rabbit turn. So I'm going to have to machine this down so that I can fit it through the spindle. Well as you can see I've been busy there's rather a lot of aluminium cuttings flew off the lathe and I'm making well, I'm adapting a lever collet closer to fit the rabbit turn it's the same one that fits the Slant Pro but obviously it's a little longer in the spindle slightly over slightly larger than in diameter than the the drawbar or whatever it is for the rapid turn that you get supplied with it however it didn't take too much to uh, turn it down to the right size so it would fit through the spindle the idea now is I will cut it and thread it in the lathe and I should be able to fit it on here and then I'll think about uh, guards etc what I was making in aluminium was this spacer this is part of the part of the collet closer and it's meant to fit on a spigot and you're meant to set it up nice and true um, you may have seen uh, the earlier video I actually machined a register on the pulley so um, it fits and it's a lovely good sound within you know within half a thou a thousandth of an inch at most of concentricity so I'm happy with that so I'll proceed and next thing I'll do is check out and see see how much I need to cut off well okay after a session of uh, screw cutting I finally got the draw tube for the collet closer to fit the collets uh, it took quite a bit of screw cutting Got had to be careful uh, the collets actually tolerance wise I don't think they're very good because I took one out of the box I'd never used it before and it wouldn't go anywhere near it and then I took another one out of the box 
from the same batch that hadn't been used. Uh, took it out with the wrapping paper, tried it and it was perfect. I just think the tolerance wise they're not so good. But generally speaking, not a difficult job. So I made the spacer. Well first thing was I mounted the rapid turn on the lathe, machined a, a register on the back of this pulley. I then made my spacer so that this stood off the end of the shaft of the rapid turn or the end of the spindle so it was clear of that and I also made a register to suit this uh, part of the collet closer and then with a hand drill I uh, locked this spindle and drilled through and tapped the holes with it in situ uh, and that's it fitted now and then went Put this in the lathe, cut a little bit off to length, it still needs about an eighth of an inch off I believe. It's, it, the collet's on, drawn to a close there so I think about another eighth of an inch will see it fine, eighth to three sixteenth max, maximum off. I've allowed plenty of thread so I know it won't bottom out in the, in the tube. And, and that's it, it, it should work. I, I, I don't know how the hell these things work so I'm going to put it all together and try it and see if I can get it a grip metal but I'll, I'll film it when I do get it uh, sorted because I think it's a worthwhile attachment for the rapid turn. Another thing that I've noticed too, this pulley and um, people complain about you know you can't get the torque with the rapid turn. Well maybe you can because I've managed to drill and tap this, I've made a register, nothing to stop me now making a slightly larger pulley that will go over the, over the, out, over the outside of this pulley and reduce the, you know, increase the torque available at the spindle because I think it could do with just a little bit more for larger diameters, slightly larger diameters. Uh, I've got one or two larger diameter things in mind for this machine and it would be nice just to just have a little bit more torque from it. It's not too bad but it would give you that certainty that, you know, it's not going to stall out on your own heavy cut. But anyway, that's, uh, that's uh, another job that I might tackle. It, it looks like a relatively straightforward job so who knows, might, might be worth doing. Anyway, I'll uh, keep it. Okay well I've uh, shortened the draw tube a little so that it will pull on a collet. I've tried that out, that's good. Next phase is to mark out the position of these holes for this part that it's basically a pressure plate that sits, I'm going to put it on the engine mount or the motor mount plate, drill and tap this and drill and tap the plate after I've marked around the outside of the bracket and we'll see what, uh, what it looks like. Well there we have the four holes drilled for the uh, pressure plate or the mount, the bracket for the uh, pressure rod, the actuating rod. Uh, I've got to tap those M6 to take the screws that are supplied and fit the bracket there as soon as I've done that. Well, you see the bracket is now fitted to the motor bracket uh, so it's ready to go back on and then we fit the rod to, or cut the rod to size so we can operate it and we'll see. One thing to note is if, if you do decide, if this is successful and people decide to copy and do the same, make sure that the securing bolts for the actuating rod bracket don't go through the back here because they foul and stop the adjust the, the, the plate from moving when you adjust the uh, belt tension. Just a, a quick word of warning. I tried to fit it, I couldn't figure out what was going on and I took a close look and I could see that the the bolts were fouling. So I had to cut a quarter inch off them because I didn't have any shorter ones. As you can see they've still got the longer ones down here, they're not going to hurt anything. And uh, when I do have to take it off or put it back on, I'll have to remember, short ones go to the front. Okay. Well, Another modification I've had to make is to uh, drill a hole at 90 degrees to this one in the bracket once I've tried it on machine. 
I realised it was 90 degrees out but there's no other way to mount this, there isn't enough room to mount it other than vertically. So I had to pop a hole through there uh, so that this will fit on there. So we'll uh, sort that out. Well I finally finished the fitting of the uh, collet closer. I think it could maybe just go a little bit past centre line there but that's it in the open position as you can see there free to rotate but I can move my stock around and if I just click there she goes and that's solid so it's ready for trial so that's great I'm really pleased with it and uh, I'll post some video once I get it you know once I use it in anger we'll see what it runs like uh, in fact I might just wait until tomorrow and do some more video then well hopefully you can see if I just turn that very slightly that way you can see the lever actuated um, collet closer from here it's I mean, it's really nice uh, to operate it needs a little bit of adjustment perhaps a little bit tighter um, I haven't set it up fully but there you go that's it there you can see you probably can't see that but I'm turning that on the workpiece with it in the closed position and if I start the machine you can see the very slight wobble on there it's not too bad at all it's actually it's worse than it was before and it's not too bad and that's full speed so I think what I'll do is just work on this a little. I think it's just not quite uh, parallel. I might even scrape the face of it just to get it to work right. Let's we'll see. It's just that little bit of run out. You can see the handle shaking. But it's better than it was and I'll get it working properly. Well, after a lot of perseverance I think I've uh, finally got this. It's a little bit of handle shake but not much more vibration than anything. Uh, you see a bit of shake there but other than that it's okay. So uh, it's fine. I'm happy with that. So the next thing will be to try it in a